G'day guys, my name's Walter and welcome to Cozy TV. So today guys, I thought we would talk a little bit about my life. So most of you may not know that I'm actually adopted. So my biological mother uh, had me out of wedlock, which means that um, they she gave birth uh, when she wasn't married. From there, I was moved to Seoul uh, and put up in an adoption agency. A married couple from Australia came to Korea and adopted me and they are now my parents. So I went to Australia not long after and I settled down in a city called Nara for about four or five years. And then I moved to Canberra, which is the capital city of Australia for about two years. And then finally I moved to a place in Queensland um, near a place called Gatton. During that time, the Asian population wasn't as big as it is now. I, I went to a primary school that only had about 70 kids at the time, um, and I was definitely the only uh, Asian there. So when I went to high school, there was a, about a population of 500 or 600 students at that time. I was still the only South Korean. So it wasn't until my late teens is when I moved to the city of Brisbane uh, where I started working in a hotel and I started meeting a lot of Korean people. So I thought it might be interesting to get the perspective of my parents. So sit back and relax and watch this little part with my mum and my dad. Hey guys, uh, welcome to uh, my mum's place. Uh, say hi mum. Hi, how are you? And I'm here with my dad, so dad say hi. G'day everyone, how are you? Why did you decide to adopt? We decided to adopt because I couldn't have children for mm. medical reasons. Mm. And so, and I want, dearly wanted a child, so yep. um, my husband and I decided that, that we would adopt. Why did you choose Korea? We looked into a few other countries mm. and um, Korea was the easiest mm. um, as far as the other countries you'd have to go and stay for six weeks yep. and go through court proceedings mm -hmm. and the, the natural mother of the child, the baby, mm -hmm. would then have to hand over the baby in court and it was far too emotional for me. I, mm -hmm. I didn't think that I would take very well with that. Mm -hmm. And so we went to Korea which um, we it went through um, Eastern Child Welfare. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they notified us when the baby was born. Uh, yeah, but that's that's basically how we did it. I was born in 1988. During mm -hmm. that time, was there any stigma attached to adoption? Yes and no. Like mm -hmm. um, a lot of couples that couldn't have children mm -hmm. were doing it. When we went over to pick you up, mm. there was about six other couples. Mm. When we picked you up and. I took you to, we were taking you home, bringing mm. you home to Australia. Yeah. We went um, to the airport, of course, mm -hmm. and you started crying and, and mm -hmm. I couldn't pacify you. Yeah. And these Korean ladies mm. took you off me <laughs> and um, tried to console you as well. Mm, right. Um, but as far as the stigma is concerned, I didn't experience a lot of it. That, like during that time, uh, racism was was pretty high against Asian people, right? Yes, yes, mm, it was. Right. Yeah, but not now. Not now, definitely not now. Like it's still people always told me, ask me about racism in in Australia, and it does happen. But um, yeah, it does happen. But like it, it happens with all races. It right, exactly. Yeah. That, that's what I say as well. So it happens with every every country as well. So what was the reaction from your family and friends when uh, you told them that you were going to adopt me? Uh, look, well, well, that was really great. They were really uh, happy for us. Mm -hmm. um, grandma and granddad, or my mum and dad, mm -hmm. they, all my brothers were absolutely uh, ecstatic right. that, that we were going to adopt a, a Korean boy. We had to have letters mm -hmm. from our, our families. Yep. Um, to say how they would feel to have a a, a, a Korean adoptee, yeah, 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 or a child from another country, and they were very supporting and very loving, and they, I, they, 
welcomed you with open arms. Yeah, yeah, of course. How about like uh, your friends? Like, um, like you were in the navy. Like when you had, like when you brought me to Australia. What did they think? Oh, well, look, listen, all my shipmates were um, mm. absolutely ecstatic too. They were over the moon. Um, we went down to the pub and had a couple of beers for it. Mm. But how were like public reactions? There wasn't a lot of Asian population in those no. areas at all. No. Um, so what was sort of the re reaction that you'd get from the public when you'd be walking around with me? Well, their first impression was usually if they didn't know me. Yeah, was, yeah. Was they thought I had a Korean husband. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> that would make sense, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that was their, their natural thought. Yeah, right. So... And I guess it would be like the same, like if dad was walking around with me, he pro they probably thought he had like a Korean wife, right? That's right. A lot of people look twice once they've seen you. Yeah. And then we got, uh, like when you're only about eight months old or ten months old, they used to say like things like, oh, does he speak Korean? Yeah. <laughs> go, yeah, yeah, you speak Korean. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but I only speak Australian, but I can't talk yeah, to you. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, did the public, were they ever curious? Did they like ask you, oh, why is your child Asian? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, lots of people ask. And like... Were you comfortable with saying like, oh, you know, my son's adopted and... Oh, it's very comfortable. Oh, okay. And even even these days, like, I still wonder, like, when you tell people that you have a son, w at what point do you say, oh, he's adopted? Yeah, as an example, mm. when you came to my work, yeah, when yeah. you came to visit me a few months ago, mm -hmm. and you walked in and you could see the puzzled look Mm. on people's faces. I mean, a few of them knew mm. that, that I had an adopted, adopted Korean son, mm. but then others didn't. Right. So they were surprised right. to see. And then they said, how lovely you were and had such good manners. I'm a good person, that's why. <laughs> I'm a good person. You, you brought me up well. Did you notice like anything from me? Like, I would be asking questions about, you know, why do I look different from you or why... <laughs> Mm -hmm. At the time, no, we we uh, we didn't keep any secrets from you. Yeah, we told we knew, and right. we let you know that you were adopted. Right, straight from the end, you know, straight from the beginning, and that was the best way to bring it because mm -hmm. you were going to come up through life, mm -hmm. go to schools, right. and all different schools, and people were going to say <laughs> like bad things. <laughs> oh, you're an yeah. Asian, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah, and then yeah. they, then when they see your parents, they go. Hang on, what's going on here? That, and then you just probably, that would have flipped them out too. Right, exactly. That yeah. was... As you started to grow up, mm. we talked about it a lot. Right, 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 right. You know, as far as being adopted into our family. Right. We, um, as you were growing mm. from little. Right. We always let you know. Right, right, right. But we also let you know that how much we loved you. Right. You know, and, and it didn't matter to us one way or the other. Right. Because you were our child. Right. The big thing for me was like, um, you know, going out and, you know, there were times where I'd be out with like my friends and you or mum and they would always think my friends are your child and I wasn't, right? So, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I sort of yeah. got used to that, but it, it still took some time. Do you remember like me ever complaining about like being Asian or that sort of stuff? No. No, you never ever complained about being Asian. A lot of times you came home mm. from school and you said that the kids were picking on you. Yeah, you never ever complained to me mm. about being Asian or being Korean. Right. You, I thought you were quite happy within yourself. It was, I think um, early on in my schooling life it was, I felt a bit isolated because everyone else was, you know, white. It was kind of sad but like I, I have no yeah, doubt yeah. that it would, would have been difficult for you oh yeah it was it was you know those days some days were better than others you know in high school I met some really cool people and how important was it for you to maintain some heritage of mine like the Korean very, very important because mm. I um, when your father and I went over to pick you up mm. um, we bought books mm. and um I got, we bought your Korean national costume, which we got you christened in. Oh yeah, the humbook, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we were originally going to name you Walter Hun Lee, uh, sorry, yep. Walter Hun Kion Lee Gebhardt. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. told you one day that 
you'd probably go back to Korea. Yeah. But in the end, uh, after a bit of an um, argument with your mother, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I only got the Walter part, but I got to keep the key on. Yeah, 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 right. right which I'm, I hope is okay by you. Yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. I, I use it actually when I'm in Korea. I use my Korean name because oh, okay. it's oh, um, right. a lot easier for some people to say. It was very important that you knew where where you came from, so that yes, as you've done. Mm. You wanted to go back and 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 pick up some of the customs and the mm. which we couldn't give you. Right, right, right. Your your adoption process mm. took three years. Oh wow! So before I was even born, or yeah, oh, okay. long before you were born. I had to go to play groups and meetings with uh, with the government departments. Your father and I had. Um, three interviews mm. with them together mm. and then we had two mm. on our own oh okay we had to pass a, a very stringent test you know they don't just hand children out right a right 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 you know it, it was very very traumatic and very very intense and we had to write a 10 page autobiography of mm. our life Oh, really? And submit it to the government, like the government department that was doing our adoption. Wow. Mm. And then when we went over to Korea and, and picked you up, mm. we went to the Eastern Child Welfare. Mm. And it was heartbreaking mm. to see so many children that needed needed ch a family. You know? mm, right. Uh, I don't know what it's like now, but mm. in those days, it was pretty horrific. Mm. You know, there was two babies to one cot. Jeez. And uh, as long as I live, I'll never forget it. But mm. I'll never regret the day I did it either. Oh, good. It's because I'm a good son. You are a good <laughs> son, and I love you dearly. I love you too, Mum. I love you too. Okay, so that wraps up the interview with my mum today. Um, thank you very much, Mum, for giving me your story. Uh, there's many things I didn't know as well, um, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I had this talk with you, alright? I love you. Love you too. Alright. Thank you very much for listening. Okay. Thanks very much, Dad, for your time. No worries. I love you a lot. And, uh... Now, one of the hardest things for me was, you know, not being able to fit in anywhere I go. Now, my parents and my family loved me to death, and they made me feel like the family. And I am part of the family. But the reality is that I'm not biologically related to anyone, so I did have that sort of separation um, that was hard for me to connect with them. However, I appreciate everything that my parents and my family has done. Now, moving back to Korea also had a um, sort of uh, quite hard connection for me was because that I am Korean looking and I'm actually Korean born, but I don't speak the language fluently. Um, you know, I am trying these days to, uh, you know, practice Korean every day. So the most difficult part for me was not being able to fit into both countries some, in some way. You know, I'm still very proud to be a Korean-born Australian citizen. And this is why I do Cozy TV, is because I want to help people feel a bit more connected. As Koreans especially who are, you know, quite a shy race, you know, they always come to me with questions about Australia. But it must be said, guys, that in this situation, please don't feel sorry for people who are adopted. You know, they don't know any different. You know, their family is their family, biological or not. Most Korean adoptees are actually very happy to talk about their past a little bit. So guys, I hope this really educates you a little bit more about how adoptees feel. Um, this is just my case, you know, there are many other cases out there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. This is probably my most sensitive video that I've done. Um, and I'm very happy to share this actually with you. So like always guys, remember to like and subscribe. And like I always say, stay positive.